What's going on Tamers? Welcome back to another TBL Meta Snapshot. This is Season 3, Week 4. And I just gotta thank you guys. Thank you for answering the Numamon Challenge. He still made a topping appearance, but not in first place. I'm not gonna lie, I was almost triggered when I saw the graphic that Varney provides us here. Shout out to Varney. I saw uh, Numamon in the, in the pie chart, and I was just like, dude, there's no way three weeks in a row. But... <laughs> Second place is still really good topping a uh, uh, placement for for Numamon. Uh, this is looking like I like this pie chart. This is like an all Adrian pie chart. I'm seeing a lot of Vmon love here, so I appreciate everything. Uh, we had 16 players, 12 different decks, good amount of variety. Shout out to our winners: Moral Atheist got fourth with Imperial. Uh, Michael 74766 took third with Magna. <laughs> Uh, we have obviously Numamon in second place. And our first place finish is Shaded Dane with Imperial going undefeated 4-0. Baby, let's go. Uh, my pick of the week is coming. Shout out to Panzer there. Um, but we're going to get right into it. I'm really excited. I do see uh, in participation a, um, a Grace Nova. Girl Power Pet Shop. No idea what that is. But... It sounds awesome. So yeah, without further ado, let's get on over and check out these deck lists. So we have our our fourth place. Uh, this is the first version of Imperial we're gonna go over. Um, anything that sticks out, anything that sticks out. Okay, so... All right, so the only thing that would concern me really is the lack of options. There's only one Giga Death in here. I mean, obviously deck space is very tight. You wanna make sure that you get your mainline cards in you want to get make sure you get your ratios for your um for your evolution chains and stuff like that so i totally get it sometimes options do get sacrificed when you're building decks um giga death is a good one of uh because it's a very powerful option um but i really think that you can make room for maybe three or four options uh personally i've been testing uh, three Mega Death and one Giga Death uh, in in my version of this deck, and it's been working out pretty well. I might I might bump bump Mega Death down to two, and then just play the three options, the two and one split. But so far, it's been working okay. Um, I like what I see. Uh, Mag, this card is just this card is amazing. Uh, it's just really good. Um, if you're playing Vmons, you you probably play a number of this card. Out of security, on Digivolution, just from your hand. It's a very strong card. The blocker is nice. The armor purge is nice. It's kind of like back in the day, BT8, when people played like two copies of Magnamon just for the unsuspend. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I can totally see why this card is being played. I do... Um... So we have 4, 8, 12. We have 14 champions, which is probably where you want to play that number you want to probably float somewhere between maybe 12 and 14 champions because of just the way the deck is with dna digivolution on the champion level um, i understand the togamogumon completely it's the same thing as lydramon from bt8 you want to have your off color source and what i mean by that is it's very hard to it's not very hard but it was always a, like the the inconsistencies of having both pieces at the right time was always kind of a little bit of a detriment so having the off color that you need is is very nice and this is an armor on wormon you could make the argument to play lydramon in this in this place but i think togamogamon with a suspension effect just makes a little bit more sense um you know sometimes you have the xv and you don't have the sting so this kind of counts for both on either side of that coin so i totally get that and we're we're, we're probably playing a heavier wormon uh deck here we have eight wormons and uh only seven vmons so i guess it is something that you would hit. Now, this Wormon here uh, is a very, very good card. You're, you can digivolve it on an egg for one, which is not terrible, but you're you're mainly gonna just abuse this with the on play and the start of main off of your tamer. So, yeah, I mean, this is a really good card. I haven't really tested um, this Wormon specifically just yet. I do prefer the promo um, Wormon that we got from the movies. This guy is just really, really good. I love abusing his on play with the tamer and he does have that really good end of turn inheritable to dna so it's just kind of fits in theme with the deck uh but i i definitely am going to pay close attention and, and maybe test out that other worm on because i do feel like it does have really um 
interesting and beneficial applications. This Vmon here is, is becoming slowly very, very, one of my very favorite Vmons. I think his effect is just very well balanced. The plus 2000 DP on your turn, if uh, just as an inheritable, is really strong. Um, everything else is really good. The only thing that I do differently is this ratio here. So I play three fighter mode ace and one BT-12 Imperial. Um, I think fighter mode ace is just too strong not to play like more copies of because not only can he digivolve over your dragon mode, which sometimes you're gonna end turn by digivolving on uh, dragon mode and passing turn just to have that effect of, of, on, of on play on a skill on your opponent's side of the board, you just kind of go ahead and interact with them. Uh, and then you can go ahead and blast into uh, fighter mode for free. You can do that also on your Paeldramons. So I like the fact that you can be aggressive with your ultimates and then still have a backup. And fighter mode ace is very interesting. I mean, because it is a mega level ace card, which is not something that's unfamiliar to us. We have several mega level ace Digimon cards right now. Uh, but because it's a mode change from Dragon Mode, it does benefit from having extra DP. So this is a 13k DP that your opponent has to deal with somehow. And that sometimes isn't the easiest thing, especially if you're sitting on your all turns plus 1000. Um, or if there's any other inheritable that gives you DP on your opponent's turn, obviously this is just your turn. Uh, but you know, you're talking about Imperial being a 14k Digimon for most of the time, which is not something to sneeze at. Um, so I like that ability of being able to utilize the blast evolution over the ultimates, especially because your Pyodramons are so powerful. Um, so I would kind of go ahead and change this a little bit. I've also had success with BT12 Dino B, so my ratios are slightly different. You're, got, you're talking about four, two, and one Dino B. But again, we don't argue with results. These are just suggestions. You can play this deck like 100 different ways, just as long as you have your core, that's where you're gonna find your success. So shout out to our fourth place Imperial. On to our third place Magnamon deck. Um, so, I mean, he's here, right? Magnamon's in the format. It's a very, very good card. Don't get me wrong. Magnamon is a very strong card. Um, but I don't think it deserves the hate that it's getting. Um, we've talked about this a couple of times in our chats, maybe even on pod. Magnamon is really not the problem. M what the problem is, is the multitude or the pool of options that he has access to because of his colorway. He's blue, yellow, and black. And you can make the argument that some of the better options in the games are in those colors, right? Um, just off the top of my head, blue, you have Meteor Moon Impact, you have Mental Training, you have Hammer Spark, you have Ice Wall, you have just really good blue options. Black, you have Ultimate Flare, as you can see here, and yellow, obviously Heaven's Judgment. Now, this card, I just want to put my two cents in. This is the card that potentially needs to go. Um, Magnamon on the board by himself allows you to access minus 24,000 DP. And that's very, very strong because at worst, you're removing two mega stacks. Like you're just literally deleting two 12K Digimon. And that's insane. That is very strong. And if you apply it over a wide board, you're doing, you're pinging 6K on whatever that is four times, essentially. If for some reason this Vmon is on board, that's another 6K. If for some reason Ukamon is on board, that's another 6K. So you're talking a maximum potential of 32,000 DP being negged on the board. And it, that's not impossible. More consistently, it's gonna be 24. But yeah, I mean, 32 is wild. Um, that's crazy. So I think, I think Heaven's Judgment needs to go. What, whether it happens or not is out of my control, but I really do think it needs to go. It limits game designs. We've already seen reveals and spoilers of multicolored, tricolored Digimon coming in, in upcoming sets, so it's something Bandai's going to have to pay attention to. Um, anyway, back into this deck list. Uh, 
yeah, I mean, Magnemon is, is a thing, right? It's solid. I love the Ruin Mode up top. It's definitely a card you can play. Death X is definitely a heavy hitter this format. Blitz Omni for a game is very good. I like the Louis tech. It's kind of like your hybrid for game, Louis for game. If you have a Digimon and Raising, you're playing an Ukamon engine, so you want five eggs for sure. This Tamer right here in my testing is the MVP. Um, this is a very strong Tamer for Magnemon. Being able to get that second check and then just going ahead and mind linking for reboot is very very nice also alliance isn't the worst because you are going to have multiple bodies on board that you can feed to the alliance just to get multiple checks on your magna i don't see any zubagon punches in this list which i i think final zubagon punch is a very good card for magna x but again just some stuff that i see the only the only major change i would make is i would swap these ratios i prefer bt8 magna over bt13 magna uh but that's neither here nor there um yeah, I mean, this is a really solid deck. I'm liking Blinding Ray at worst. it's uh, you, you take one out of security to gain two memory. Sometimes you need that extra two memory. It also just benefitly triggers your uh, Magnemon on Digivolution. So it's, yeah, really good. Ultimate Flare is a very good removal card. I mean, this is solid. Um, nothing to argue. Um, Jamming Vmon is interesting. I love Jamming Vmon. It's probably my favorite card in the game because this is like the first Vmon. I ever like actually had when I started playing this game um, so it's like I have a really uh, I have a soft spot for it uh, emotionally but I am finding a difficult time incorporating any number of these into my lists um, but it is a good card you know that chip damage with with jamming is, is really nice um, yeah I mean what are you gonna what are you gonna say right this you're gonna see a lot of different magna variants being played uh, this is this is more of a control uh, variant here because of what you have up top, um, but that's kind of what Magna is. Like it's not really an aggressive. It is. It can be sure, but it's it's. You kind of want to control the board. You know, you want to be able to answer with uh, starter Magna. You want to be able to sit on Magna X, and you have your other pieces here to ensure that you win when you need to. All right. The Boogeyman. Uh, second place, Numemon. And eh, enough said. Let's move on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, but what are you going to say, right? Any deck that can run eight Ugumon successfully is going to, to be in contention. Um, this is interesting here. Chaos Mon. 15k DP, 15 cost to play. Digivolves for five over a yellow or black level six, which you have. <laughs> Uh, DNA for a yellow level 6 and a black level 6, which you have. Barrier blocker partition. Okay, that's awesome. When digivolving, digivolve 3. Or when digivolving, D digivolve 3 on one of your opponent's Digimon, then one of your one of their Digimon gets minus 8k. So you're clearing a stack. And that's just when digivolving. So you can just digivolve for 5. You don't even have to DNA for that. End of opponent's turn, trash the top card of both player security stacks. Okay. That's really strong. I mean... I don't know how often you're going to go into that for free on the DNA because I don't know if you're going to want to give up your board presence. This is the, the argument with DNA that you have all the time. Do you want to like essentially neuter your board to do something that there's no like aside from it being a free Digivolution and an unsuspend your when Digivolving effect doesn't proc on DNA. Like it can proc on DNA, but it doesn't have to. You know what I'm saying? Like so, so there's no overall benefit unless you know you're gonna get the partition and spit out your bodies anyway i don't know how partition works with aces so this might be a question for you guys to let me know in the comments down below does partition trigger overflow like if you have valkyrie ace and if you have platinum numa in the stack and you trigger partition technically the technically they're leaving the board, right? Like, how does how is partition worded? Let me see if I can figure this out. When this Digimon with each of the specified Digivolution cards would leave the battle area, other than by effects, by your effects or battle, you may play each of the specified cards without paying the cost. But does it trigger an overflow? That's a question for the community. I'm definitely going to follow up with Varney and Dan and, and the guys in DGU as well. But if you guys know the answer, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to see if that actually triggers the overflow because if it doesn't, then partition on an ultra is gonna be very strong with um, uh, um, mega level Digimon that are aces. So onto just critiquing this again i mean 
I think Dan has been talking about the Edamon Valkyrimon combo is something that you might need to pay attention to. On play when digivolving until the end of your opponent's turn, one of your opponents is my start of your main this Digimon attacks. Yeah, so you're forcing your opponent to attack just so you can ace them. That's kind of disgusting. But yeah, I mean you need decks like this to keep everything in check. Otherwise, you just have the big guys run away with the format. Numamon is solid, man. I mean, I might now that the DCGO sim is updated with BT16, shout out to Huang Zero and his team over there for giving us that asset for the community. Now that it's updated with all the BT16 cards, I might just try playing Numamon just to see like what it's about. Uh, I know it's a good deck, uh, so I guess we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I mean, this is also a card that's becoming a thorn in my side. Venusmon is just so strong. I mean, she's so good. Uh, yeah, and that's what you need. You need Rogue. You need. I, I wouldn't call this Rogue. This is definitely off-meta, anti-meta. Uh, that's going to answer the popular decks. But, yeah, I mean... I wonder now, we've answered the Numamon challenge to peg him out of first place. I wonder if we can get him out of the top four. That's going to be the challenge, right? <laughs> On to our finalist and our pick of the week, Imperial Dramon. Now, this is more in line with something similar to what i've built minus the paildramons here um we're still sitting uh we're sitting on 12 champions which i think is fine um because you have searchers and stuff like that um yeah i uh, <sighs> imperial german is just so very very strong i mean the addition of this paildramon here which is essentially the heart and soul of this deck uh, because of everything that it does, you're still getting your benefits of your older Paeldramon with the Unsuspend, but you're also answering the board. So it's like a hybrid of these two just kind of meshed together and made more, I guess, I know more better is not what you want to say grammatically, but just it's better. Um, I still feel like this Paeldramon is worth playing, especially because you have Jamming Inheritables, which is really nice. And it also sets you up for the Blast Evo on the Fighter Mode. Again, here, like, we're talking ratios up top. I'd probably put Dragon Mode to 3, just so I can squeeze in another Fighter Mode Ace. This Dragon Mode is a very, very good card, but we've talked about this earlier, that I like the interactions with being able to blast over a Mega, or blast over my ultimate when I need to. So, that's something that you want to look at for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, this is very, very solid. Mega Death is a very good removal card. It is a 5-cost removal. If you bounce uh, an Ace you're playing it for one or two like that is ridiculous same thing with giga death giga death is a nine costed option but with overflow over overflow with overflow you're playing it for five or six so that's not terrible for what it does right especially if you trigger it off of a paeldramon with the board already being fully suspended you just kind of board clear and it bot decks everything so it's not like destruction you're going to dodge um on deletion effects you're gonna dodge the situation where you put the cards back in your opponent's hand and they just replay them the next turn. Bottom deck removal is probably the best because it doesn't trigger anything except for it would trigger partition and it would trigger um, any any effects that say if this Digimon were to leave the board, do X. So yeah, you're going to trigger that, but you're also you're going to dodge a lot of effects too. So yeah, I mean, Imperial is here to stay, man. I really like it. I really like seeing it do, doing well. Um, it's budget-friendly, minus your Paeldramons. I think this is the most expensive card in the deck. Last time I checked, it was sitting around like $15. $60 for a playset to build a Tier 1 competitive deck in the format is not terrible. So... Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm glad that we're able to get these TBLs out for you guys on a weekly basis. Um, let me know in the comments down below if there's anything different you'd like to see. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys are enjoying Season 4 so far. I also believe that our winner, uh, Shaded Dane, did walk away with the 3D printed uh, Digi, Digi Egg of Miracles uh, deck box that Varney has been... Uh, kind of like filing out on his new 3d printer that's like his new passion now but uh yeah so man kudos to you that deck box is really awesome i hope you enjoy it um but yeah i mean i've got nothing more to say keep on signing up for the tbls you can find all the information in the discord we fire every friday night at 7 p.m and i hope that uh, you guys are enjoying pt16 as much as i am so without further ado we're gonna get on out of here and we'll see you guys in the next video